everyone. Welcome to Straight Talk on Beyond. With me is the High Commissioner of Pakistan to India, Mr. Abdul Basit. Hello, Mr. Basit. Thank you very much. Good Thank to have you. you on the show. Thank you for having me on Beyond. <laughs> Let's start uh, with the most contentious issue between India and Pakistan right now. What is the status of Kulbhushan Jadav? Uh, the status of Kulbhushan Jadav, uh, uh, as you know, that uh, he was convicted uh, for um, uh, espionage and sabotage in Pakistan and uh, uh, an appeal was submitted uh, mm. to the appellate court uh, on his behalf and uh, now the process will begin and uh, we will exhaust all the process of uh, mercy petitions as well. So as far as I know, um, uh, the execution, if at all, uh, if his mercy petitions are rejected, mm. uh, will still take a few months. Two things. You say as far as I know, which is interesting because there are many, many reports that the Pakistan government is not completely on board and the military is in charge. And B, you say process. The process also involves giving him consular access, which he wasn't given. No. Uh, process uh, may or may not involve uh, the consular access uh, because we uh, took a decision on that uh, in terms of our 2008, the government of Pakistan. Uh, in terms of the 2008 uh, council agreement between Pakistan and India uh, and paragraph four, six of that agreement clearly states that uh, issues uh, related to security uh, would be decided on merit. Is Pakistan a signatory to the Vienna Convention? Yes, it is. It says clearly that even, even if we were to assume that he's a spy, mm -hmm. he has every right to get Access. No, it's not about only espionage, uh, Palki. It is also about uh, subversion and terrorism. Where is the proof? So proof was presented before the court. Pakistan has been embarrassed internationally. And I'm, I'm going to repeat that the government is not in control, that the military is in control. When you talk about processes, his 40 to 60 day window of appeal has expired. He's still not been shifted to a civilian prison to civilian custody. There is no word on his status. There is no proof of life, as the government of India has been saying. Is it, how difficult is it for the Pakistan government to not be in charge of a case, but at the same time face flag internationally and embarrassment? No, we haven't faced any embarrassment because the ISAG did not give any final ruling on it his case. That he it was been, a provisional he order. He should have been given access. It did say no, that. No, no. It never said that. If you go through the provisional order carefully, what uh, the ICJ said was that uh, they just stayed the execution. And in any case, execution was not, uh, was not imminent because, as I said, we had to complete the entire legal process. As far as the council access and the issue of jurisdiction, that these two issues are concerned, we will have a full hearing at the ICJ and then a final judgment would be given. So, so far there is no uh, judgment on these two issues. As Do you well know for a fact CJ. how he is, how he is, in what condition? He's fine. He You've not fine. answered my question. Who is in control of this case? Obviously, the government of Pakistan is in control. Let and me now. let me read out to you what Sherry Rahman told a parliamentary committee mm -hmm. that all facts were not disclosed in this case. Your not disclosed because that. it's a sensitive case. There, there are many. Info, I mean, it. Uh, uh, there are things which are not required to be made public or should not be made public because of their sensitivity. So that's why it has been kept uh, confidential. How is then this a fair and free trial? It's a free and f because it is absolutely uh, in tune with our uh, local uh, our laws, laws of the land. A few months back, Sartaj Aziz said there isn't enough evidence. Suddenly, he's convicted. But since then, you know, that was then. Mm. So we have come a what long way changed? since November, changed? December. What has changed? Because we are get Commander Jadev himself has been cooperative with us. He confessed to all his wrongdoings and then also shared uh, many, many uh, things with us which cannot be made public. There's a lot of secrecy. There is, because of the sensitivity of the case, the nature of the case itself. How do you respond to reports in the Pakistan press? that this case has become an albatross around the government's neck, the military's neck? Not really, because as far as this case is concerned, I can tell you, we're very confident and, uh, and we know what we are doing because uh, Commander Jadev has been involved in many, many subversive activities 
and uh, he was given a fair trial. Where is the proof, sir? Because every time India makes a charge, it gives a dossier of evidence. No Where proof, is the proof here? Proof has been <laughs> presented before the court. So we are not obliged to share that with India. That is the point. But at the same time, we did ask India in January, if I, I recall it correctly, to share information or to confirm certain things uh, on the basis of information Jadev shared with us. Mm. But so far, we haven't heard from India. But isn't it a two-way street? The government of India says that it has asked for access so many times. But as I said, uh, you know, this consular access is not automatic. We are, you know, as a responsible international uh, member of the international community, uh, we very much, we would like to, uh, and we do, uh, adhere by our international obligations. So there is no question that uh, Pakistan would ever violate uh, its uh, responsibilities. But as far as the consular access is concerned, Palki, I can tell you that uh, uh, our decision uh, uh, was driven uh, by the Council, the bilateral agreement first, and then the sensitivity of the case itself. Uh, we wish that India had shared or assisted us in response to our request of uh, 23rd January, uh, and then perhaps things could have followed, you know, uh, also perhaps the Council excess. But uh, there was no response from the Indian You're side. You're throwing the ball in India's court. Let me then ask you this. There's been one setback at The Hague. And you say that we will fight this case. If the verdict is against Pakistan, will Pakistan still abide by it? First of all, I must again emphasize that there was no setback. Uh, in such cases, the ICJ, ICJ usually gives, uh, you know, these provisional uh, stay orders, so to say. So there was no setback. But there is a lot of criticism within Pakistan that you went unprepared, that you did not exhaust not really, all know, the time that was given, the 90 minutes given there. Such a, and then such the a stay order came... was expected in any case. Okay. But now when we would have a full hearing, uh, I hope the timetable would be announced on 8th of June. So then you will see how things really uh, go from here. So despite all that that has happened in the past one year and the Jadav case to top it all. Mm. It seems the Pakistan government is trying to make efforts to have some sort of a dialogue with the Indian Prime Minister in Astana next week. You know, we have always believed uh, uh, in, in, in dialogue, uh, in talking to each other because we strongly feel that that is the only way forward between our two countries. Uh, there are serious issues involved and unless we talk to each other, uh, I do not know how can we settle, resolve our problems. So that is a kind of, you know, sine qua non uh, for uh, having an environment which allows the two countries to find permanent solutions to our problems. So in order to push for that dialogue, your government had to resort to a private individual, i.e. Mr. Jindal. So then as, you, as a diplomat, do you believe you failed because your government is going to is, is using back channels as they have themselves admitted. No, that was a private visit, nothing to do with, that wasn't a back channel, that was a private visit by Mr. Jindal to, to Pakistan to, uh, and uh, he was, he met the Prime Minister, uh, so there wasn't official about it. Wasn't that what the Prime Minister told the military establishment? Sorry? Wasn't that what the Prime Minister told the no, military establishment? No, I'm not aware of that, I'm not aware of that. But it was a private visit, as I said. And as far as, you know, if you are terming that as our failure, that we have not been able to persuade India to talk to us, I think it's, it's a mutual failure, a mutual loss. Because talk is not, talks are not a favor by one country to another. We strongly feel that talks uh, are our mutual interest because only talks can lead us to solutions to our problems. I'll repeat what I said. So an individual is asked to mediate between two sides. Do you or did you at any point feel redundant as a diplomat no, here in there, India in, in, in a situation as intractable as an in India-Pakistan one? No, but there wasn't any back channel, you know. Jindal's visit, Sajjan Jindal's visit was what purely, was it about? purely private. Uh, the two friends met, they spent some time together, that's it. Nothing official about it. And you, you feel that there is room for diplomacy? There is, always the room. There, is always, there is always room for diplomacy and I feel and I strongly believe that diplomacy should be given a chance. So do you still see a meeting ground between the two countries? 
why not? I mean, in diplomacy, you always, you know, leave the door ajar. Uh, mm. It is never, never shut down firmly. So there is always room, space. Uh, so I, I'm always optimistic about this relationship because, frankly speaking, we cannot live uh, in hostility indefinitely or forever. Uh, the time perhaps has come to uh, introspect, reflect as to how we can uh, settle our problems and move on because the world is uh, changing, so should uh, Pakistan and India, I believe. Sure, and I think a good place to start would be forward movement on terror cases long pending in Pakistan Absolutely. despite the evidence given by India. Why isn't there any? You're referring to? I'm referring to every case of terror. No, terrorism, terrorism is perpetrated by people based out of Pakistan no, in India. Terrorism is also a huge issue for us and uh, the conviction of Commander Jadif clearly uh, shows that uh, terrorism in Pakistan also has an external dimension to it. So we also have, we too have serious concerns when it comes to terrorism and whenever we uh, have a dialogue with India, we would also raise our concerns. But if you are referring to Cases like 2611 Pathan or Pathankot, uh, 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 I may uh, uh, underline that uh, in order to move forward in such cases, uh, it is absolutely important that uh, the two countries cooperate with each other. Uh, and uh, unless we uh, cooperate, uh, I don't see how we can really move forward in these two cases. It takes two to cooperate. It takes two to tango, yes. 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 And so where is the movement? Again, I keep coming back to that. Movement on what? Movement on any of the cases. No, because, you know, for example, take uh, uh, the example of the Mumbai uh, attack trial. Yes. Uh, our foreign secretary wrote to his Indian counterpart back in September 2015. Uh, that uh, we would need uh, this A, B, C, D. And we uh, received the Indian res response after, exactly after one year. And now we are waiting 24 Indians to uh, appear before uh, our court uh, for their testimonies. Uh, so, as I said, it takes two to tango. We would need active cooperation from the Indian side in order to conclude uh, the Mumbai trial and, and that is also in our interest yes, to put a closure tactic, on that as quickly as possible. This is a tactic Pakistan has mastered to always throw the ball in the other person's court but have you seen today's headlines by the way, newspaper headlines? Yes, I Defence Minister Arun Jaitley saying that India will maintain its military dominance at the LOC from, from a reactive policy. India's policy has become proactive. Pakistan has brought it upon itself. Not really, you know, because, uh, and that is unfortunate. Uh, it was Pakistan which uh, uh, proposed, uh, or it was a unilateral act on the part of Pakistan to go ahead with uh, ceasefire in 2003, November 2003. And since then, Pakistan has been adhering to that understanding. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, there have been problems uh, and at one stage Pakistan even suggested to formalize this understanding into a formal agreement. Even that did not happen unfortunately. Uh, now we do have a problem uh, in Jammu and Kashmir as, you, as we all know. So important is to see as to how we can, as was uh, said by uh, Home Affairs Minister the other day, that uh, they would be seeking a permanent solution to the problem. So we hope that uh, there is a permanent solution to that problem, long-standing problem. And here I can only add that uh, a perma permanent solution can only be permanent mm. if it is in sync with the aspirations of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So we hope that uh, uh, the Indian government is uh, seriously thinking about it uh, and as far as Pakistan is concerned, we, uh, as I said, we strongly believe in uh, resolving this issue peacefully, amicably because that is in our mutual interest. It would help immensely if infiltration stopped from the other side if you really hope that there, there is peace in Jammu and Kashmir. You mentioned Balochistan. Let me tell you. No, I did not mention Balochistan. Who mentioned Balochistan? You said terrorism, internal okay, terrorism, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. You, you referred to Balochistan. Mm -hmm. All right. We on did a ground report from Balochistan last month. We spoke to many people, many of them understandably were wary of coming on camera. But most of them told us that the government is now actively working to make 
the Baloch, the ethnic Baloch, are man a minority in their own province. That people go missing and after a few days they're declared terrorists. They're blaming their own government. It seems the Pakistan government and the military largely is responsible for the mess it's in. How do you blame India? Where is the proof? No, we did have problems in the past, but I can tell you that these uh, handful of people do not represent uh, the people of Balochistan who you are talking to. Mm -hmm. uh, people of Balochistan are very much part and parcel of our national development uh, process. Uh, we strongly feel that uh, the CPAC, uh, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, uh, would be a game changer not only for Pakistan, but for Balochistan in particular. So, uh, 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 there have been problems in the past, but I think uh, we have been through with that phase and now the people of Balochistan are very much taking, you know, um, actively participating uh, in their development uh, projects. Game changer is a non-committal adjective. It can, it can change the game either way. And you mentioned China. Only last week, I understand, Beijing pulled up the Pakistan government for not being able to ensure the safety of Chinese workers in Balochistan. No, there are, as I said, there are problems here and there, but the overall situation uh, is, is fine. Pakistan's uh, bitten more than it can chew. Not really. Why, why are you saying that? Because Pakistan own, is a big, economists, big country. Your own economists are saying it's a dead trap. Not really. We know what we are doing. So we are not worried about any dead trap. You're not worried about the, all the Chinese investment, the way things Why are should going, be worried? people expressing concerns in your own country no, 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 as no. others. There is national consensus uh, as far as uh, CPAC is concerned and uh, this would... Uh, national consensus how? Because in, recently, you know, uh, at this uh, meeting, uh, uh, Belt uh, Road Initiative, uh, the Prime Minister was there, all mm. the Chief Ministers were there. So there is national consensus when it comes to the implementation uh, of the project itself. Because it's a huge project for us and uh, uh, we are very confident that this would yield good results for us, uh, for the whole entire country. Good luck with that. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the foreign policy. Uh, the Arab NATO, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif attended the Riyadh summit. It's been called the biggest set back to Pakistani foreign policy because now you're walking a tightrope between two old allies, Saudi Arabia and Iran. Not really. Uh, no. Because, you know, we, with Iran, we have uh, excellent brotherly relations uh, and our relations with Saudi Arabia and the Gulf countries have always been very good. How will you tell so, your brother that you attended a meeting but this, where the U.S. president said Iran is the, 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 the country to go after when it comes to... But it's not terror. necessary whatever uh, the U.S. president said there. You're Pakistan part of the summit also that subscribes to, to, to their views. You're, you're, you're part of but the we are part of that military alliance, hmm. you know, uh, that is against terrorism, not against any particular country. So that distinction should be kept in view. Uh, it is not against any country per se. It is against terrorism, and Pakistan has joined that military alliance only in that context. Iran was named. By, that, by many leaders mm -hmm. at the summit. So Pakistan does not subscribe to those views. You can pick and choose? Because our, you know, our objectives uh, or the objectives of this alliance mm. are limited. They are not uh, aimed against any country. Did Pakistan really have a choice when it came we to do participating, have a choice. Why not? participating in this alliance? No, if, if, this, if, if this alliance evolves into something different, then obviously Pakistan always has the choice to withdraw itself from that. Why not? You've dragged, your, you dragged yourselves into a military, no, in, our, into a conflict that you are not... Our national not interests are supreme and Pakistan will make sure that those interests are not compromised. And uh, as far as those interests are concerned, uh, our relations with Saudi Arabia, with uh, other Gulf countries are very, very important. And our relations with Iran are equally important. So we would not like to be to be taking, you know, uh, sides on, the, on these issues. If national interest is supreme, then how do you deal with the sectarian violence, which many say will worsen if you were to take sides in this alliance? So we are not taking sides, we are, we, and we would not take sides on, on, on these issues, because our effort would be that if we can be a bridge between Saudi Arabia and Iran, if that is possible. We would rather play that kind of a role rather than taking sides uh, between Iran or Saudi Arabia. The Dawn this week did a report on how terrorists 
are operating freely. People related to terror groups, groups related to terror outfits are operating freely on social media in Pakistan. But journalists and bloggers have faced action by the FIA for speaking up on social media, on Facebook. How does your government explain this dichotomy? The government is taking action and I can tell you that uh, uh, this Radul Fasad operation which is underway uh, will take care of all these things. Uh, but media in Pakistan uh, is, is as robust as you find in any other country for that matter. There can be one individual examples here and there, but uh, and anything, if anything happened to that effect, that is always unfortunate. But then we must not be generalizing that everything in Pakistan is bad. No, I'm or, not generalizing. Uh, I'll give you numbers. Hmm. 200 people slash groups under the scanner these are civil society individuals, journalists, bloggers. But of these, the these FIA, are the claims which are being made of without the FIA, any... Multiple reports have said mm -hmm. that. But 41 of the 64 terror outfits which are banned by the Pakistan government are operating. And they, they reach 160,000 people. No, they will be, they will be handled. Uh, this, you know, the all-encompassing Radul Fasad op operation is precisely, you know, has these uh, objectives. So, I'm sure... Uh, we are moving uh, surely, steadily but surely, uh, as they say, and uh, action will be taken uh, against all these uh, outfits, banned outfits. The Afghan intelligence has now blamed uh, Pakistan for the Kabul truck bombing. This is not something new. Pakistan tends to be blamed for a lot of terror attacks. Yeah, this is, uh, that is unfortunate because uh, it was back in 1979 when the then Soviet Union occupied, intervened in Afghanistan and since then Pakistan has been suffering uh, because of the problems uh, on our western, you know, uh, western border. And, uh, and then and since 9-11 things uh, had kind of worsened for Pakistan. So uh, Pakistan itself is a victim of terrorism. Hmm. So it is an easy kind of pretext or alibi to blame Pakistan for everything. But we know uh, that uh, as victims ourselves, uh, Pakistan can never condone terrorism uh, in any form or manifestation. So, uh, and this is what we have been telling uh, our Afghan brothers that uh, in order for it to address this or defeat this monster, we need to cooperate with each other. Rather than to I, be, I was talking to the Haqqanis, that's what the Afghan intelligence says. No, but at one stage everybody was talking to the Haqqanis. No, Haqqani. for this attack. For this attack. So, uh, so, ha, so, then so, was, so then they orchestrated it. But the you know, Afghan government itself has been saying that uh, they do not have the control of the Afghan territory. The entire territory is not under their control. So Just it's like not, you're saying so that entire territory necessary. is not under our control no, because we have I never said of that. terror. I never said that. I never said that. So who knows these Haqqani network, uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, they're not on our side. So they may be somewhere operating uh, from within Afghanistan. Who knows? So you're saying the terror attack was mounted by those within no, I do not know. I can't really, you know, point fingers at anyone. Uh, it is important not to jump the gun or to be quick in leveling allegations or making accusations. First, we need to check facts on the ground and then say something. And if you have anything, then better share those things with, with, with Pakistan rather than simply uh, alleging that this or that thing happened. India knows where that goes. Uh, let me read out to you what Munir Akram, former ambassador to the UN, wrote. Hmm just a couple of months back, and I'm quoting here, Unfortunately, Pakistan's diplomacy has displayed several missteps which illustrate an absence of strategic coherence and direction. These include the Prime Minister's participation in Modi's inauguration, the inability to meet Kashmiri leaders, the UFA declaration emphasizing terrorism and ignoring Kashmir, unwarranted confidence about bringing the Afghan Taliban to the negotiating table, uninvited admission of the presence of insurgent leaders in Pakistan, the fumbling response to Saudi Arabia's request for military support, the tepid reaction to Afghan and US assertions regarding Pakistan's role in Afghanistan and America's unilateral drone strike in Balochistan. This is stinging. He is entitled to his views. Uh, but as far as you know, uh, it was a bold decision on the part of our Prime Minister to come uh, and attend the inauguration of the Prime Minister-elect of India. 
and I think uh, that uh, uh, visit and their meeting between the two leaders be between them was excellent mm. and uh, we thought that uh, uh, we can make a new beginning in our relationship but unfortunately uh, 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 we could not really you know uh, sustain you that sustain that momentum and that was everything was going fine it was supposed to be a new chapter the yeah, foreign secretary so, level talks were slated. Yes. And then you chose to meet Hurriyat leaders. So uh, there wasn't anything unprecedented about it. It wasn't ill timed? Not really. Why? Because our interaction with the Hurriyat, uh, we believe, is, is, is positive, is constructive, because that helps to, uh, to explore possibilities uh, for a fair and tenable solution to the Kashmir issue. So there is nothing wrong about it. So Pakistan will even, continue to engage even, even with the, separatists. Even the Indian governments have been meeting uh, the Hurriyat leadership. Uh, in the 2000, you know, uh, the NDA government and the, the UPA government. This they is have a new been government. In, have been you understand the political climate. You understand what are the red lines for this government. No, but government. these things do but not change. But you chose change. to go ahead and meet Hurriyat leaders. Do you, are you saying that you will continue to engage with separatists? Yeah, because... Who the government of India because, calls... Because interaction with the Hurriyat, I think, is important uh, in order for us to resolve the issue uh, because they represent the aspirations of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So you're saying that even as Pakistan exhorts India to come back to the talking table, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it will keep engaging with separatist leaders? No, we have, been, we have been talking to them even during the last three years and uh, uh, that has been the case. So I, I do not see why Pakistan shouldn't be interacting with the Hurriyat. Have you followed what Daniel Coates said? Blaming Pakistan for deteriorating ties with India, warning of further decline if India is hit by a high-profile terror attack. Your own former diplomats, the Americans, the Indians, the Afghans, everyone is pointing a finger at Pakistan. How can Islamabad remain in denial? No, but we are not in denial. Uh, if we were in denial, we would not have, you know, uh, uh, put uh, the seven accused of the Mumbai attack behind bars and there was no trial in Pakistan. Uh, so Pakistan is not in denial. Uh, wherever we get uh, evidence, uh, we move ahead, we move forward. But unfortunately, you cannot put uh, people behind bars or you know, uh, try them on the basis of hearsay or on the basis of fiction. For everything, you know, like in India, we also we, we we also have our own legal processes, legal procedures, and everything has to be, you know, uh, dealt with uh, with according to the law. Only in India, it's an open trial. It's everyone. It, it's there for everyone to see. And Ajmal Kassab was caught on tape uh, unleashing terror in Mumbai. Was also given a fair trial and then sentenced. I, know, I cannot. I cannot think of parallels in Pakistan. No, but you know, Can you? he was a non-state actor. Well, he, uh, whereas, if you're referring to Commander Jadev, he, he's a serving naval. He's a Command serving naval officer. He is not. He is a retired naval officer. And I said earlier, even if we were to assume so I, that that uh, that he is a spy, he should have been given certain rights. Daud Ibrahim is living there. Hafiz Saeed is living there. I can give you a whole list of terrorists operating out of Pakistan. I want to know what action, if no, any, if, is being uh, taken against. If you are referring to Hafiz Saeed, we you know put him uh, under. Custody, preventive custody back in 2009 as mm. well. And again, he is again, uh, as at present, he is uh, under house arrest. But as I said, in order to move against them, uh, legally we need hard evidence. But that unfortunately never been shared with us by India. What are you telling the Americans? Are you worried? Is Pakistan worried that they're, they're going to cut aid? No, why should Pakistan be worried? We do have good relations with them. Uh, there have been, you know, ups and downs in that relationship, but uh, U.S. continues to be our largest trading partner. So while we do have some divergences, we do have strong convergences as well on many issues. So I think this relationship uh, will move uh, forward, will strengthen uh, in the months ahead. Donald Trump at the Riyadh summit uh, did not allow, as some put it, Nawaz Sharif to make a statement. But he mentioned India as one of the countries facing terror uh, that, that emanated from others. No, that Perpetual embarrassment, isn't it? Why embarrassment? That was his speech. He made it. So, so you call him your biggest ally, but he's not speaking. No, we never, I never said he, the United States has been our biggest ally. 
I said we do have problems, divergences, convergences, but uh, there is more convergence uh, between us. So we are confident that this relationship will augment in the months ahead. So that is uh, what, uh, how I look at it. In the months since he's been president, uh, American visas to Pakistanis have dropped by 40%. Mm -hmm. For the same period, American visas to Indians have gone up by 28%. This mm -hmm. is a small example. Mm -hmm. So while Pakistan may have escaped the travel ban, Pakistanis are facing much tighter scrutiny. So we do have problems. I am not saying that we do not have problems, but then our relationship is strong enough to iron out these differences. So this is what it is. And it's not a zero-sum game between India and, pa India and Pakistan, you know. Uh, you can have your relations with the U.S., uh, we, can have, we, we have ours. So I do not look at, you know, through the prism of, uh, or through this zero-sum game uh, uh, paradigm. Uh, it's far more than that. So you've been here, what, three, three years, a little over three yes. years, March 2014 yes. you came. Yes. Any regrets during your stint? as a high commissioner? No, I think my only regret is that we have not been able to uh, resume the dialogue process, formal dialogue process, despite the fact that the two countries did agree uh, in December 2015. Uh, we agreed on a comprehensive dialogue process. The framework is there, so uh, I sincerely hope that uh, the two countries would be able uh, to to, to start the dialogue process because that is the only way forward in my view. Otherwise, we will keep on, you know, we will be mired in this uh, blame game all the time and would not be able to address the real hardcore issues. And without that, I do not know how can we bridge this mutual uh, distrust. Uh, so in order to uh, bridge this gap, this, this uh, we need to really sit across the table, discuss everything sincerely uh, and with a sincerity of purpose, seriousness of purpose, and then move forward. That is the only way. Is Pakistan hoping that this sitting across the table will happen in a week from now in Astana? You cannot escape that. It may not happen uh, in the near future, but uh, it will happen uh, two years hence or five years hence because uh, at the end of the day, uh, we will have to come to the negotiating table because uh, we are two big countries in the region. Uh, because of our not a very healthy relationship, the entire region is suffering. So we but talks and terror don't go hand in hand as, as many in India, including the government, have said repeatedly. So, yes, uh, but you know, then the two countries did agree uh, in 2009 at Sharm el Sheikh that uh, talks should be kept, should not kept separate from uh, terror issues. Uh, so that was our mutual understanding. And terrorism, as I said, you know, it's also a big issue for us. Uh, and uh, we hope that whatever concerns Pakistan has would also be addressed. How do you remember w your time in India? How will you? No, it has been a fantastic time, uh, uh, but the only regret I have is that uh, the two countries could not resume the dialogue process. Uh, but I am confident that uh, this will happen. Uh, this will happen. Fingers crossed. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to have much. you on the show. Thank you very much. Be kind of you. Thank you.